and welcome to Consumer Update. I'm Kelly Lifehorn. Today we're going to talk to you about something that you don't hear much about, deferring capital gains on real estate transactions. And with today's economy, this is more relevant now than it has been in the past. Joining me today to shed a little light on this topic is James Brennan, Principal and Corporate Counsel of the Exchange Solutions Group. Now, I'm so excited to have you here today because, of course, you're one of the leaders in the industry out of Washington, D.C. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Thanks, Kelly. Uh, Exchange Solutions Group is a qualified intermediary for Section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code. Section 1031, for those of you who don't know, is a, Which most of us don't. <laughs> is a section of the Internal Revenue Code that allows taxpayers who sell commercial real estate to defer capital gains on the sale of the real estate. And we are a qualified intermediary that facilitates that trans transaction. You need a, a qualified intermediary to complete the transaction. Gotcha. So what are the benefits of these 1031 exchanges? The benefits of the 1031 exchange are you have no immediate tax obligation. Okay. That's the main benefit. And the second benefit That's is always good. improved cash flow. So if you okay. sell a piece of land, you can have income producing property instead of that land. So instead of writing a check to the Internal Revenue Service and for property taxes and, and the state government, you can basically have income, which is a better thing. Much better thing. Now, this industry, is it growing? Is it shrinking? I mean, a lot of people don't know about it, so you can tell us a little bit more about the actual industry. Gotcha. Um, as far as the overall industry, uh, you have to have gain to defer capital gains. So most people nowadays in real estate, a lot of people don't have the gain. So if you bought a property for $500,000 and you sell it for $300,000, this doesn't apply to you. So you have to have okay. people who actually have gain. So it is, it is uh, growing in the sense that there are a lot of baby boomers aging that have held real estate for a long period of time who still have gain on their properties when they sell, but the overall industry is shrinking. The number of qualified intermediaries went from 330 in 2005 to 140 this year. Really? I didn't know it was that drastic, but I guess the economy is basically affecting everyone. Um, now, your company is a little bit different than most of the intermediary companies that are out there. Can you tell us about what you guys provide or how you guys are different? Sure. Um, well, first of all, there's uh, three of us. Two of us are attorneys. And, um, that, Which that's is a, always good. I'm an attorney a, as well. So. That's, a, that's okay. a big difference in the industry. Um, and the second is uh, there's a lot of mistrust in this industry as far as uh, people's proceeds. You're handling a lot of money um, because you're acting basically as a trustee after somebody sells that piece of land and buys the income producing property. So we allow clients to self-direct the transaction, if you will, and select a bank and select a bank that they're comfortable with. And that's a that's a very important thing. A lot of uh, qualified intermediaries that are competitors uh, control the transaction and don't let the clients know where the money's being kept. See, and that's, that's great. I mean, especially in this, this kind of an economy, in this kind of environment, you're basically the middleman. So we need to be able to trust that middleman because, you know, it's a lot, of, a lot of money we're Absolutely. dealing with. So because of your credentials, it kind of gives a little bit more of an ease. Is that, is that, that safe to say? The credentials is a big part, and actually uh, it's using the bank they trust. So if I'm okay. in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I want to use the Bank of Wilmington, um, I have more comfort with that banker, and because I need a qualified intermediary, uh, I can kind of check all the boxes and for the transaction. So you basically let the consumer kind of lead the whole process. Correct. Which is, is something that's different in the industry. That's Absolutely. Great. Now we're going to start talking politics. Capitol Hill, have you seen any changes or anything that's impacted what you do? Well, um, the Bush tax cuts expire at the end of next year, okay. so the 15% federal capital gains rate will go up to 20%. And, um, and that's without any real changes by the Obama administration. Um, as far as overall revenue generating procedures for the Internal Revenue Service and the Obama administration, there's really nothing slated that will impact this. Um, overall, if they do raise capital gains taxes, it will increase the number of 1031s because this is a provision that, where people are avoiding paying taxes and deferring paying taxes. So the number of transactions kind of correlates with capital gains as it goes up. So there could be a pretty drastic impact. Wow. Yeah. Now, foreclosures, because we're in Florida, and obviously that, that's a big issue. Um, what kind of tax impact can you see on foreclosures? I know short sales have become very popular in the past few years. Uh, foreclosures is a big issue. I actually just did a seminar with uh, the Resnick companies and the Calcane companies in Washington, D.C., focusing on deferring capital gains taxes on a foreclosure, and it's mostly commercial real estate transactions. Right. Um, so if you have a, a non-recourse mortgage and you actually give the keys back to the bank in a foreclosure, you trigger a capital gain. So not only do you give the property back and lose the property, but you have a tax bill to pay. So we use 1031s to defer paying that tax when, when you get foreclosed upon. Yeah, because you would think once you're foreclosed, you know, 
you don't want to pour salt in the wounds, exactly. but it sounds like you kind it's of, if you don't, whammy. yeah, if you don't plan, plan ahead, then, you know, you could really get hurt. Absolutely. So there's a good planning opportunity there. Wow. Okay, great. Now, what plans do you have for your company in the future? Obviously, with, with the changing environment, you know, how is ES Group keeping up with that? Well, um, as, as the overall industry is shrinking, one thing I said earlier was uh, the number of intermediaries went from 330 down to 120. Um, we plan to kind of expand as others are shrinking and contracting because real estate is cyclical and the market's going to come back. Uh, the need for our services kind of our market share increases every day as other people drift out of the industry. So locally, we are expanding in our immediate market in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. but we are a national company. We have a presence in Massachusetts, Florida, Dallas, Texas, and we're expanding into California. Um, Chicago is another market we have on the radar screen. Uh, we haven't opened up an office there yet, but that's the way we're going. Any, any place with larger transactions, commercial real estate, where people have big tax bills they want to mm -hmm. defer paying. Do you think, do you think even though the, um, the whole industry is shrinking because of what you do and how you do it, is that why you guys are able to expand? Because you would think, industry shrinking, well, how are you expanding? Well, um, it's, it's just one of those things that um, people need this type of um, third party, as you'd call it, a middleman, uh, to pull off this type of transaction. And regardless of the economy, there are going to be some people who have a need. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be one of the only games in town. In Washington, D.C., uh, when I started in this business in 2003, there was 14 competitors. Right now, we're one of two in, in that market. That's amazing. So, I mean, that says a lot about your company, that you're able to withstand the economy, because a lot of companies aren't. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we find out, how do, how do we get in touch with you, how do we find out more about you? Well, um, our website, we spend a lot of time on our website compiling a library of not only um, 1031 sections of the Internal Revenue Code, but for anybody with um, real estate assets, um, we spend a lot of time on a library. Um, so our website is uh, 1031esgroup.com and uh, our direct contact information is 703 801 4178 and um, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah, and I do want to add on the website, if you guys missed any of this, like if, if it was hard to understand, it's very easy to navigate your website so you can learn a little bit more because, you know, as an attorney, this was a little easier for me to follow, but sometimes when you talk taxes, when you talk law, people go, oh, I don't understand it. But this is something, if you're dealing with any kind of real estate transactions, you really need to know about. So Absolutely. Uh, everybody should know about this because, um, you know, people are building wealth through real estate. So most likely you're going to have an investment property somewhere along the line and you're going to want to know how to deal with it for tax treatment. Well, you know, I appreciate you coming today. And I think there was a lot of information given. So thank you again. Thanks, Karen. And we'll see you right back here after this short break.